Analytics 2.0 aren't just stronger, they're smarter, more targeted, lower collateral damage, and pair well with other pathways like autophagy. I've recently done a cycle of the Senolytic peptide FOXO4 DRI, as well as a pulse of Fisertin. So I'm gonna share my early stage results with that, bar markers to look out for, and then other senolytics that are on the horizon. So you might have heard of people doing a senolytic protocol with desatinib and quercetin. So desatinib is a chemotherapy style drug and unfortunately it's not very specific, it's not very selective. And so people get flu-like symptoms, you hear anecdotal reports of it. Yes, they do work the combination of them, but there is downsides to it. It has been shown on the pace of aging tests, it will down, slow down aging. And I do like the polyphenol quercetin. It's got a lot of health benefits outside of being a senolytic, but compared to fisertin, it is a bit easier to get it from food in, in, in meaningful amounts. For example, red onion, as long as you haven't overcooked it, you can get around 40 milligrams from a 100, millig from 100 gram portion of red onion. So I'm able to get a maintenance dose of it from food. I'm able to sneak it into meals, whereas fisertin, it's uh, to get 100 milligrams of fisertin, you need to eat 600 grams of strawberries and you'd really want them organic because they use a lot of pesticides with strawberries. I'll come back to fisertin as I regard it as a semi-smart senolytic. There is an analog out of it now that looks very promising. So moving on to the peptide FOXO4 DRI, it seems to have a high level of precision in uh, targeting just senescent cells. So senescent cells rely on staying alive by um, P53, that being bound up by FOXO4. And so that's, uh, that stops the cell from going through a cell death, apoptosis. And so what FOXO4 DRI does is it mimics that FOXO4 binding to it, uh, freeing up P53 and allowing cells to go through uh, cell death, apoptosis. So there's been a few studies with FOXO4 DRI in mice, and there's one back in 2017 where it restored their actual fur coats and then even uh, activity levels as well, exploratory behavior, and then markers of cellular senescence. And this was replicated back in 2019, again, looking at renal markers of cellular senescence. So in kidney tubules, uh, SAL, beta, gal, and that, that drove it down, as well as uh, markers of kidney health, like blood urea, nitrogen, and creatinine, that they normalized. And what was noted was in both these studies that the, uh, the mice, they maintained healthy weight, because that shows the high level of specificity that FOXO4 DRI has if it's targeting just senescent cells and not healthy ones. And I'll come on to this with my own personal findings with it. And it's not just skin and kidneys that FOXO4 DRI targets senescent cells with, there's even evidence with pulmonary fibrosis in a mice study where it reduced the epithelial uh, senescent cells in, uh, those lung, in the lung tissue. So now diving into Fisertin, it downregulates BCL-XL, BCL-2 and MCL-1. And these are anti-apoptotic proteins that senescent cells overexpress to avoid death. So you may well have heard of the Mayo protocol where you do 20 milligrams of Fisertin per kilo. So a 75 kilo person would take around 1500 milligrams, about 1500 one milligram capsules of it. Or it, it can be cheaper to buy in powder if you're regularly doing that because the Mayo protocol they, they advise you can do it up to even like once a month. Senescent cells often use the growth pathway mTOR and fisertin inhibits that, so that can nudge it further towards apoptosis when you do a mega dose of it. Same with, uh, you've got the antioxidant pathway um, NERF2, and so by overexpressing that for a short period in this two day pulse, then you're reducing oxidative stress in those senescent cells and then making them more vulnerable to apoptosis. Check out our 12 month rejuvenation program where every three months we look at 225 different bar markers and get your future vitality optimized. There's even a six month break clause if your situation was to change. Then of course you've got SASP suppression, it stands for senescence associated secretory phenotype. So physicine can help with the cytokine release from these senescent cells like IL-6 and IL-8. And then that moves me on to my uh, dosing protocol with both FOXO4, DRI and Fisertin. So what I've noticed over the years, my IL-6, when I first started measuring that, because that's a central marker of cellular senescence when you have a high amount of it, and mine was originally, it was in the 96th percentile and up until uh, the summer last year, I got it down to 78th and then it looks like it's still coming down further still, but it's coming down quite slowly. And I've seen other people where they get their IL-6 down faster 
And so it can, it depends on where your senescent cells are. In my case, because my visceral fat was already low, even um, I've, I've been measuring DNA methylation inflammation back in even in 2022. So it was even higher than even 96 percentile for IL-6. It's been steadily just coming down. And so but it's gradually coming down because it looks like mine obviously isn't being secreted from my visceral fat because mine was low already. So that's one of the major reasons why I decided to stack them both together, as well as uh, my DNA methylation C-reactive protein that's been very stubborn and coming down, um, just kind of stagnating. So, uh, and then obviously FOXO4 DRI, it's not a cheap peptide at what, over 200 pounds. Actually, it's pretty much bang on 200 pounds with my discount code. So not far off the price of Retitrutide. And the reason why I'm so apprehensive about doing FOXO4 DRI all, over all these years is obviously uh, Retitrutide is pretty much the same price and then you, you're you bound to notice an effect from it. So I didn't, I was wary of doing something where you don't notice much. Say for example, doing a, a Pfizer 10 pulse, I'm just below that uh, 20 milligrams per kilo of body weight and I don't in the past when I've done a pulse of it I didn't really notice much of an effect I could have gone to the gym if I wanted to but uh, with the uh, FOXO4 DRI actually have noticed an effect an immediate effect so and then I could have done it years ago when my IL-6 was higher and other biomarkers you know of cellular senescence like short 10 mm length but I wanted to wait to try and get the most out of one vial because some people do very expensive cycles of FOXO4 DRI like doing multiple vials of it. So I thought I'm just gonna do a pulse of it alongside the Pfizer 10 and see what happens. And over that two days, I've definitely, I noticed something. So I chose to do it on the weekend because I'd exercised five days straight up to that point. And then I thought, yeah, so having a rest. And then, so over the weekend, I noticed my recovery scores had dropped, but not crazy like into, uh, you know, into the red zone, but like things like HRV, it tracks heart rate variability, things like that, resting heart rate. And it did drop normally on a weekend, unless I'm eating really late, having a lot of disruption to my central nervous system. My recovery scores are looking around 85, 95%, that kind of region. And then I'm looking more like 55, 58%. And furthermore, to compound these findings, my sleep scores are really, really high, but still low recovery scores. And it even crossed over into Monday. So like the, the following day would actually stop doing both Fazitin and FOXO4 DRI on that Monday, I still wasn't recovered. Like uh, I could, you know, I was doing lots of walking. I used it for a long weekend, just, uh, you know, doing lots of exploring and I could feel it in my legs. They weren't recovered from all that exercise in the week. It definitely slowed down my recovery. Uh, I mentioned about mTOR inhibitors on a Saturday without fail year on over the whole year, I do rapamycin. So obviously that slows down um, like cellular proliferation, growth, repair but I'm definitely, I was feeling so even by Monday. So if you do a, a manual job, you need to take that into account, maybe book that Monday off if you do this protocol. Like I said, it's not overwhelming the hormetic stress from a FOXO4 DRI, no flu-like symptoms, but it is noticeable, like uh, even just doing low level activity, if you're walking up and down hills, you will feel it, that recovery. And so that's why I don't advise to do exercise. But yes, you do wanna do things to inhibit mTOR, activate AMPK, your body's energy sensor, because then that puts you into a more autophagy mode, and that's more senolytic friendly. And so I mentioned about rapamycin, not to say that's uh, an actual drug for things like uh, organ transplants and cancer, but even things like spermidine, that's been shown to activate autophagy, and then uh, other things activate AMPK like uh, berberine or more bioavailable forms like dihydroberberine or berberine phytosome. You've got uh, alpha lipoic acid, even metformin, the diabetic drug does as well. So by enhancing autophagy, you're stimulating the cell's internal cleanup system. You know, mitophagy, clearing those dysfunctional uh, mitochondria, and then even tissue homeostasis, so uh, reducing the burden of near senescent cells. Some people during a senolytic protocol, they like to do a fast during it, say 18 hours up to 48 hours, that kind of region. But if you uh, don't have a lot of fat, especially visceral fat, or you're not overly muscle bound, then there's a lot of uh, drawbacks to that because then if you're healthy and your, your BMI is healthy and you're burning away muscle, that's not ideal, especially with age. Another option is doing, you know, like a, say 600 calories over both days. So you're just doing like that kind of like, like a 5-2 diet just for that week during um, when you're doing your senolytics. So other biomarkers I'm keeping a close eye on, as I mentioned before, telomere length. Short telomeres on a perfect proxy for cellular senescence but telomere attrition, if they suddenly get shorter out of nowhere, 
that can be a sign of cellular senescence and I did notice this March last year where they dropped to the bottom fifth percentile. I was working myself into the ground and I've done that over the years where I've been working very hard years and years ago and uh, not getting much sleep and just uh, even drinking lots of alcohol, lots of fibrosis, you know, in the kidneys and liver. And this takes a long time to repair as well as in the brain too. And so, uh, yeah, these, these are all things I'm keeping a close eye on as well as obviously IL-6 and C-reactive protein because my C-reactive protein has very, been very stubborn. So yeah, this, this, this is taking some time to clear these things. And unlike, as I mentioned before, if you've got, if it's metabolic reasons, you've got high levels of IL-6, high amounts of visceral fat, you can clear that quickly. You know, you do one of these uh, GLP-1 agonists, then that, that can, uh, you, you nuke that senescent, uh, those senescent cells in the visceral fat, that can happen quickly. But when it's organ specific, or even joints, things like that, if you've got cartilage like senescent cells in there, and then immunosenescence, that's another thing I'm keeping an eye on. So you've got your CD4 to CD8 T cell ratio, and the ideal range, you really want to be about 1.5 up to two so in that kind of that region 1.5 1.75 in the past i've been as low as 1.2 not quite but when you get below one that's a real strong indicator of immunosenescence i've never been below one but and then you've got the other end of it if you're like 2.5 three or above four even that's a sign of uh you know being having an autoimmune disease as well. So I'm currently awaiting my latest true age and true health results and that'll be available in August. I only just submitted them and it's quite a short window, like only what, three, four days before doing the test. Ideally, you wanna wait a bit longer, but uh, previously my results, I had an error with it because that's a problem when you're doing, running a lot of peptides close to doing one of these tests, it can skew the methylation patterns, you know, week to week comparisons. So to touch back on Fisetin, it's a pretty affordable supplement, especially if you're say doing it quarterly like I've been doing, just doing a pulse of it, it doesn't add up. But yeah, if you're doing it monthly, then uh, I've been made aware that you, know, you can just buy it in powder form, it can save you a little bit of money, but uh, it, from time health, it's pretty cheap. So it doesn't, um, um, I'll, I'll review that because I'm even looking at an analog of Fisetin called thiazoline, and this is much more powerful it's uh, lipophilic, so it's able to uh, penetrate cells better, you know, across the blood-brain barrier as well. Early models also suggest with thiazoline that it has stronger BCL, XL inhibition, you know, that uh, anti-apoptotic protein in the cell. So, and also it's, um, you can obviously, with thiazotin, you need to have it with food. So if you are fasting, that makes it a problem because of the bioavailability. With this, that's not such an issue. And let's talk about some exciting new senolytics on the horizon. You've got UBX1325, and this targets uh, tissue specific for retinal cells, so macular degeneration. I have genes for faster macular degeneration, but so far I've been beating the clock because when I've done eye tests before and after, I'm able to read closer up. That's a sign of a younger eyes and then uh, epigenetically as well, monitoring over the years from 2022 up until recently. I've been maintaining an age delta. It was higher originally. It was um, around age expected, but I managed to reverse that. So in lieu with my um, better eyesight when doing tests, and even re seeing things from a longer distance, I'm noticing that I can like read very, very small things. There's also cartilage specific senolytics in development. I mentioned it in a recent video. So that's exciting stuff, especially if you're an athlete bodybuilder and you're putting your joints under a lot of strain and that's uh, going to be very helpful in the future for people. So I get my FOXO4 DOI peptides of London. I've been using them for like over six months now. Very high-end stuff. No mannitol added to it so it's greater than 99% purity. And the way you can tell if it looks very powdery in the bottom of the vial, if it's not solid, it doesn't stick to the bottom, normally that's a sign they've added extra mannitol in. They've had recent testing on their peptides which is the plus because standards can slip and then they've got uh, Epital on a peptide that's in a study with a top university and the results are coming out very soon. It's exciting stuff, that one. And then Fizerton, of course, I get that from Time Health. I've been using them for four and a half years. Again, they're, they're very good value for money, good quality supplements. So if you like that video, then check out this one here on my top five anti-aging drugs. There's a few I mentioned already, like rapamycin, you've got thymolin, and also diabetic drugs like empagliflozin, and also the peptide GHKCU, which has antifibrotic properties for the lungs in particular. Thanks for watching, see you next time.